Hey guys, Ryan J. Owens here again. Uh, today is a special one because I'm bringing on a longtime friend, someone I've worked with through the agency. Uh, she's also married to a retired agent now too, uh, but she had an amaz amazing career. She played for Team USA. She had a great uh, career in college, and we're just going to chat about her experiences. She played in rugby. We'll hear it from her. We're just going to wait for her to get in. Again, this is Pro Volley 101. We're talking about lessons to help you get started in your career. Hey. Hey. <laughs> What's up? I'm cracking up laughing because Ryan is amazing, like techie, social media, all of it. He is on it, and I am so not, but he loves me anyway. So here we go. It was easy to, to get on. My instructions were good, right? They were awesome. Okay. All Thank right. God. <laughs> In one sentence, how would you describe yourself? In one sentence, how would I describe myself? Oh, um, right now. Wow, I wasn't so ready for that one. What happened to, like, my age? <laughs> On the spot. Okay. I, In one sentence, I... I was going to know your answer because you talk about this a lot, but... No, that one completely threw me off. Um, I am a spirit. I am a, um, yeah, I am me. I am. And that's it. It's enough. That's exactly what I thought you were going to say. I see. I know you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, name, age, position, played, and where you're from. All right. So, name is Therese Crawford, um, age is 43, from Kalamazoo, Michigan, played in um, everywhere, played at the University of Hawaii, and then on to Italy for four years, um, taking a break and spending two years in Japan, going to Turkey, um, where else was I, Russia, uh, Switzerland, Puerto Rico, we did it. We had a good career. All over. Explain the difference, or actually tell us real quick your, your USA Volleyball, because we left that out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, USA Volleyball from 2000 until 2000, and I made a short stint in 2009. So I'd say from 2000 to 2009, USA Volleyball. Awesome career. Um, we met on the national team back in 2000, wow, five. Um, <laughs> what an experience. I loved it. Okay, so um, can you explain the difference between some of these levels, like the big differences between the levels, whether it was college, pro, Euro Cup, national team, any of that? What stands out to you as some of the bigger differences that people need to understand? Wow. Okay. So uh, college to pro, it was a big jump because I had never been um, national team. So national team helps you. If you've been in any of the like the program where you kind of go up through the, the um, pipeline. program at, pipeline, thank you. If you've gone through the pipeline, that helps because you're, you're exposed to athletes that have been playing pro um, because in Europe and in other countries, pro is amateur as far as they're concerned. They're not getting paid a lot of money, and so they are playing at that level continually, where as we play college, it's, it's not the same. You know, they're playing against always top-level competition, even if their teams are a lower level. So when you go to professional, it's completely different. However, now I would say um, at a college level, what's interesting is that a lot of them are big business. So, like, when I went to Hawaii, I was treated as a professional in the sense of it's a big business, you know, and the pressures that come along with that. But there's a lot of volleyball plus it's a business that the mentality has to shift. Yeah. All right. And can you uh, just tell us a little bit of some of the things you were able to accomplish over your career? Um, talking about, like, championships and medals, that kind of thing? Any kind of um, things you were proud of. Okay. Things I was proud of. Well, let's do the, the championships and medals and all the kind of stuff like that kind of stuff that people want to hear. Um, NCAA, we went for a championship. NCAA championship, I played against Stanford um, for the University of Hawaii. Um, I, I don't even remember some of this stuff. Uh, top 25 coming out of high school. 
Um, went on to play for the USPV, which was an elite group that were training to be professionals in the States. Then I went straight to Italy. Um, in Italy, I played for Modena with Lan Ping, who is now the gold medal coach of China. Um, I played in an elite team there, and we won the CEV Cup um, and the Italian Cup. I went on to play in Russia and played in the Final Four there. Um, in Japan, we played for the Kurorashiki and got a medal in the Kurorashiki there in Japan. Um, was a starter in most of my teams, uh, all of my pro teams. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, there's there's a lot, trust me. And I can think of a couple of things. Say, okay, I think people... Um, stuff. So what would you say you're, you're proud of from your career? Obviously, it's not the same thing. It's totally different. Yeah. Um, my, I think I'm most proud of my USA, which I didn't mention in that I was talking all pro stuff, but my USA and my most proud moment, I think, now looking back... Okay, so this is not when I was in it. Now looking back is that I stuck with it and that um, I was a part of the silver medal team in Beijing because that was the most that I sacrificed for. That was the most that I put into it. And um, I was still a part of that team. And looking back, I understand that I was really a huge part of that team even though I wasn't on the podium. Yeah. So that's well, my most proud. Good. That goes kind of like even when I think back to my career and that I didn't make – like I made the one travel team and, and, and knowing that you're part of that group, all of that sweat, all of that effort being, you know, sometimes I love how they keep the scores and whatever, and you can understand where you are, but also understanding that all of that went into those medals. And that is so, yes. Key. And so, I mean, yes. it's amazing to have been part of that and you were part of it for much longer than me. Incredible. All right. So, Let's get into uh, things about agencies because you worked with agents over your career. I know you ended your career when you were working with me, uh, which is an interesting yes. story in itself, how that came about. And we'll get to that, I'm sure. But, um, or actually, you know what? We're going to start with that. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're one of my first big clients because I started when I was on the national team, actually my second year, uh, wasn't even mm -hmm. Since I joined the national team and I heard all these stories of the nightmares about agents and I had had my own from agents and from coaches and they're not all bad, but trust me, I made some bad decisions and uh, trusted some of the wrong people, both teams, coaches and uh, or all three agents too. So um, you've seen me evolve though and elite evolve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you choose me and how did that come about? Let's, let's just come back to that story a little bit. Okay, so um, I was in a position that I was on the national team and I was looking for a team. At that time, I had an offer from Italy to go to a team in Italy, and I didn't know that agent. I, I knew that agent a little bit, but I actually didn't trust that agent, to be honest. Um, and then I had an offer to go with you um, to go to Fenerbahce. And it wasn't so much the offer as it was, the connection and knowing where I was as importance to you and your agency. You made it very clear that I was important to your agency. You made it very clear that you were going to be working for me um, and that you were – the deal wasn't even – when I decided to go with you, the deal wasn't even done. It was between those two, and I was like, which one am I going to choose? And I don't know if you remember, but it was like driving there. I needed to tell the Italian agent, no, I'm not going. I had to drive to the consulate in Denver or something like that. Um, but – and it was, it was a big choice, you know, because it was also national team. So the coach had actually, the national team coach had told me about this job in Italy. And so it was choosing between those two. But I knew as a player that you were going to be, I was very important to your agency, and you were going to be working on my behalf, and you had my back, and you were doing it for me, and not that it was a favor to the coach or that I was just something that was being passed along. Yeah, and that was, uh, so you're saying you knew that I would go all the way as in like eat that stuff that we ate in Istanbul? And we oh my gosh. <laughs> Spend eight hours, was it seven hours in, I mean, Frankfurt, what in the world? I, oh my goodness. I love Istanbul. And oh I my love goodness. Food, but whatever we chose to stop at that night, I was like, what is this? Just wrong, wrong. 
So since you've seen the evolution of Elite, right? You saw me start. Uh, you never had met even my partner at that point. I think you may have known him because he's an Olympic speed skater with us at, in the the um, Olympic Training Center there in Colorado Springs. But um, what is Elite Volley Fam to you from your perspective since you were here from the beginning and then into when I started saying all that because of a person you know very well, Melina Terrell? Right. So from the beginning for me, it was a dream and someone who was willing to work hard to establish it. It was a new way of doing things. It always has been. It has never been um, an agency that is like the rest. It's always been something different. From the very beginning, you were setting out. The whole point was that you were doing this to be different, to, be some, to do it a different way. You didn't want to be like the other ones. So it's never been... From the very beginning, it's been that. Now it has evolved as I've watched you grow as, and, and having more influence and being able to establish now in your career to be able to reach out and to help and develop careers of athletes and take them from where they're at to where they can be. And that's what's really beautiful. Thank you for that. Um, and I mean, a lot of it's you noticing that, but still, thank you for putting that out there. Uh, as... Or, or let's, let's go back to just the general idea of agents. Why is it important um, to have an agent? And what do we do for players? Or what should we be doing for players? <laughs> yeah, about that. Okay, so <laughs> I have to be careful. I'm married to an agent or was an agent. Um, so agents, you know, I didn't know this. This is looking back hindsight. What I wish I would have known is that agents are there not just to connect you and get you a job, because that's what I thought. My mentality at that time was, this guy is supposed to get me a job um, and then have my back, make sure they pay me. That, that's what I thought an agent's job was. But no, um, an agent actually can, if it's a good agent, they can help you develop your career long term, keep you and put you in specific places that are helping you to put you in specific places that are going to develop you as a player and allow you to reach your maximum potential. That's what an agent has the capability to do if they're interested in that. Um, also, an agent is supposed to be the mediator between any difficulties that you have on a team so that you never have to deal with the problems that are going on with the team. You have an agent who can deal with all of that for you so you don't have to go into conflict with coaches, uh, management, any kind of issues that you're having, you have someone who can deal with that so that you don't catch the backlash. Yeah, fantastic answer. Um, something we learned along the way, right? I mean, even as an mm -hmm. agent, me starting the agency and, and, and being so far away from wanting to be an agent, I mean, we had a conversation about this, you know, and the definition of agent because of my experience had kept me from wanting to be even called an agent, even though I started this agency. But all along the way, because I had this extreme focus on I'm going to be about players, I'm going to change this, I'm going to repair the things that are broken. I don't want coaches to feel this way. I don't want agents or teams or players, for that matter, to feel like, right. you know what, before I get burned, I'm going to burn because then yes. it's ruining our sport. So I learned later about some of those very, very important things. But from the get-go, I knew from my experiences of trying to take care of myself, even though I found like almost every single job I ever had, which is wild when you think about it. Um, I was trying to also handle those problems and wow, I learned so many lessons on why that's not a good idea and how even when things are going, yes. your, your perception in their mind changes so much and it's, it's wild to think about. And on the other side, I learned yeah. a lesson on when I started the agency that it was a big no-no to be an athlete outside of that athlete box. No, you can't have Yes. Athlete. No, you can't do anything other than sport and blah, blah, blah. And that's why I'm an advocate for having your things, but trying to teach players, how can you go about having these insurance plans, having your passions and whatever, separating your life like that from your professional life. And this is very, very important. Um, what did I expect from you as a player for our relationship to work? Loyalty and an openness. Loyalty and openness. You, you expected that I was going to be open with you um, about what was going on at all times because you couldn't do your job without it. So if I was hiding back things, then you couldn't help me to the fullest ability because you were uninformed. Um, and another thing was loyalty that, you, that I was going to be. If I was with you, then you needed to know what was going on 
um, because then you also could be loyal to me and be pursuing jobs with with me in, in mind. Because if you didn't, if I wasn't loyal to you and you went to somebody, then it looks bad on your business if I'm also talking to somebody else at the same time. So loyalty and openness. Yeah. And I think also in there, it's uh, you're talking about this, like just knowing that communication. I, I noticed in a lot of the interviews with my players, I was just so happy that I know my biggest goal, right, was communication and integrity, like mm -hmm. these things together. And the fact that everybody mentioned that I expect communication to be on point so that it's just like, it's a free flow, right? I need you to tell me what you're thinking, what you're feeling, because I can't spend all this time trying to read you when I'm trying to do this with teams. And if I get something off, I'm your voice. I don't want to get it wrong. I want to get it spot on. And if you're having doubts, if you have fears, if you want something, I got to know it all so that I can be you for the team, that professional image. I think that's how you got to think about it. I love that, that um, reference uh, to say like, you know, lawyers, not so much when you're mm -hmm. you got to defend yourself or when you've got to go get something, you need somebody who's going to be your image, right? That's why you right, sign right. literally that right for them to represent you as you. Your, that's way. really good. So it's very similar for this. Um, let's go with uh, how was it or how was it, yeah, to work with me as a player and give an example of two, how you benefited back then and maybe even. Can I just say for, for one thing that I don't know any other agent that, that um, in volleyball that sees the agency as that, as representing the athlete, I, I, being their face or their image to the team. I don't know any other agent that, that sees that like that. And, and when I say that, I see it as them representing themselves. And I think that that's awesome that you see it as representing being the face of the player to the team because you're representing them. You're putting their – that's your whole mindset is completely different than most agencies. And, I, and I'm saying that because I want people to see why you're different because you're not like other agencies. You, your whole motivation is the player. It's always been that. It's always been, that's the only reason that you open the agency. That's not most agents' motivation. Their motivation is business, make money. And I'm not saying that they, they are hurting people intentionally or that they do anything to harm a person. They would, I don't think that that's the most agents. But their motivation is not the player and their best and, and seeing the player develop and helping the player. Their motivation is business, getting a connection, getting a, a, a contract moving that player to that team because then this player, it's all about business. And yours is all about representing the athlete. I just find that amazing. Sorry. But, I, you know, it's funny because I realized that the one thing that's going to deter me from being a successful agent, right, since I own mm -hmm. is the fact that I've learned all about business. I've learned a lot outside of this agency before I knew I wanted to be in business. Uh, what I did recognize several years ago is that I wanted to be in social enterprise, right? I wanted things that created social good. And for me, mm -hmm. this, um, business is right. Business is just solutions for problems. This is a solution for a yes. problem. I want to better the whole industry. But I realized about five years ago when we shifted into this whole mentorship and education and let's help as much as we can. Some players different, whatever, but let's figure it out. I'm going to test it out. I really learned, okay, I've got to start shifting gears on the business side. Now it's got to be, I have this approach, but how I take it to that next level and build an actual business, like a real business, a strong one, because the vision for me for Elite is tremendous in terms of full circle for these players, having taken care of everything, having players like you after their career, where you're in our network still, we bring other networks in, we have agents that we can work with, everything is kind of like this symbiotic environment where no one's right. trying to hurt anybody. We're all just trying to make sure we can build up in the area where we're best, right? And where we're right. weak, we've got to realize that and say, okay, let's take something from somewhere else so we can all be strong, right? So it's always give mm -hmm. and take, up, mentor down, partner, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah? Feel me? Yes, 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 100%. Uh, <laughs> right, we're on a tangent, but you know me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're good. As a retired pro, how do you use our projects and, and me as a resource to this day? 
Um, one, to stay connected, because I still mentor athletes. So I mentor some um, of your athletes. I'm always available. I'm open to all the volleyball athletes that are still in. I have other athletes that I mentor. But it keeps my mind fresh. Um, coming to the combine, talking with the players, it keeps my mind fresh as to remembering what it's like to be not because it's 10 years ago. But remembering those mindsets that you can get caught in, what it feels like, how what how they have the pressures, what they go through. Um, so it keeps it fresh for me, and so that's why it's an awesome resource. Yeah, and the combines that she just mentioned are these basically seven, ten day events where the players come here, and we want to create an environment of learning and growth. So it's not easy. I mean, you've got double days, you've got classroom type stuff. You're with foreign coaches that come here to give their value and also show their talent. Uh, you've got the local players, you've got people like yourself, these mentors, these professionals, these experts who can come in or call in, right? We've done live things um, yeah. to add all this value. And the whole idea is you come over here, you're on your own, we expect you, put you in a, an apartment or a hotel and you've got to get from point A to point B. It's the same as if you're a pro. You take care of your life. That's so right. These college kids, and or pros that aren't used to that, it's really nice, I think, because then they come up with these challenges in this small amount of time, and it can be very, very intense, but at the same time, so valuable if you're in and you're focused on just stoking up as much yes. as possible. It's been a massive part of that. Every combine is just like, one, the, one of the top two memories that they all have is Therese Crawford. Mm. Oh. Uh, something else, in a good way. There's a lot of uh, skin that's been shed uh, dealing mm -hmm. and speaking with you and I think that's great because that's a lot of growth you know building up these athletes it's incredible yeah. um, okay the good the bad and ugly is this one that I, I call this question what do you like or respect about our agency compared to what you know about other agencies good bad ugly doesn't matter motivation I will always say it's the motivation for why you do what you do um, it's a huge difference. And that doesn't mean that the job doesn't get done. It absolutely gets done. Um, you do sign the deals. You are meeting the players. But it's done with the intention of helping the player. And that's what, to me, it, it's everything. That's what's the, the huge difference. So when you ask for loyalty from a player, you're also giving loyalty to the player. And not because of the financial dollars signed. Um, you're with it because you're invested, because you are invested in them as a player, and you're there for their good. That's that's the whole reason you're doing it. You know, like you said, you didn't even want to be an agent. So it's not about building a business, getting a name, um, having a big dollar signs after getting a good life. That's not what it's about for you, and it never has been. So that's that's the difference. That's the huge difference. You're redefining what is agent, what that word means, and um, – in what is an agency, you're redefining it as far as volleyball is concerned. I can't speak for other sports. I don't know how they work. But as far as volleyball is concerned, you're redefining what the word agency means and incorporating it into, I love beyond athletic, developing their whole volleyball, what are you beyond athletics, and then what are you going to do with it when you're done? Beyond Athletic Podcast. So you guys should check that out, by the way, if you want. That's my side project. That's my lifelong thing. I will never stop doing that in various forms, giving back as much as I can and helping people tell their stories. So last couple questions. Um, <laughs> what would you say to athletes trying to pursue pro at the highest levels? We're talking elite level mm. athletes. And should they be considering us to manage them as a big young talent or you know, straight out of the box, they're ready for that. You know what I'm talking about, these couple of, yes. of the athletes. Yes, and why I would say that they should choose you, I would say that they should choose you 100% because of what I talked about before, because of what you're going to offer them. One, what athletes don't understand and what I didn't understand as a young athlete either, if you're talented, an agent's job about finding a job for you is not hard. They're coming after you. So what the jobs are going to come after you, and then the agent just all you have to say is deal with my agent. What you want is an agent who's looking out for your best interest. Their number one thing is your best interest, not the dollar sign. So if you're good, it's not a problem about if you're going to be able to find a job. The jobs are going to find you. People are going to know you're good. That's not a hard thing. The problem is where's the, the agent going to put you? Is he going to put you in a team because they're going to give you the top dollar, or is he going to say, look, this team is offering you top dollar, but this is their setter. 
or this is their other thing. It's not the best situation for you. Yes, you can go there, and he's going to offer you. He's going to tell you flat out, here it is. But if you go to this other team, this is the best setup because next year, this, 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 and this, and I'm thinking of your whole career. I'm not trying to make the best dollar for me. That's what. That's the difference. So that's why they should choose your agency over another one because, yeah, another agency is going to put you where there's top dollar because they, they really are not. It's not that they don't care about you, but that's their job. That's how they see it. That's what they see as an agent. That's never been you. All right. Uh, what would you say? When you, when you think back to these rookies, even today, I mean, really, it, it hasn't changed much. I mean, I know now they're using Pro Volley 101. We're doing things like this. You're trying to educate. So I know that they're getting a little more information. You're starting to hear that some players are like, you know, I want to do three and a half years in school so that I have that middle of the year to either work on myself until the next season or I get that job, right? That mentality mm -hmm. develop and things like that. Um, what are the common mistakes you hear rookies make? with agents first and then we'll go to the jobs they choose second um i'm i gosh i will talk about what the the mistakes that i made as a rookie okay. if that's okay and that was dealing with the issues myself you go to a team they don't have what they said they were going to have for you you go and you talk to the coach about it or you go and you talk to the the president about it directly rather than using your agent just going in and it it can be the, the the smallest thing the simplest thing um they're late with money all of the team is upset all the team is talking about it you actually are going to go and actually talk to the team big huge wonder oh huge mistake you're not getting the playing time that you think you deserve to get you think okay like in college i would go and sit down with my coach because in college that's what you do you go and you have you ask your coach can you talk you're not going to yell but you think it's okay to just go and have a sit down with your coach no Go and discuss that with your agent first. Let him talk to you. You guys talk about it. If he advises you to go to your coach, that's fine. But it's best. That's why you have an agent. Go get a soundboard. He might know some things about this team, about this coach, about what the coach is doing. He might know some things you don't know. So go use your agent. That's the biggest rookie mistake. Use your agent. Sounding board, I think, is the huge thing. Yeah, all the time. Just just bounce that off. All the time. How are you? Because I do. I, I know some things are political environment in that team at the moment maybe a coach might be getting fired maybe somebody's changing yes. management like uh there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that we have no clue about as athletes and now when i hear about it and i see it i'm just like wow i had no idea these powers were happening while i'm thinking in my world this is terrible and whatever and i'm gonna do this not knowing that that's why the hammer came down on me because I just added more to a situation that was already explosive. So, um, I can totally remember just really quick. I can totally remember at getting advice from older players, Mika Wagner and Kiba Phipps. I was in Italy my first year and these two older Americans that were already had been in Ab uh, Italy. One told me, don't be a rompe coglione. And that is basically don't be a ball breaker. And <laughs> that's what she told me. And she was right. Don't be going in there and trying to tell the coaches or players, you know, don't, that was her advice. And it was so true and on point. That's why you have an agent. And the other one, Kiba Fitz, she told me, um, play, she's like, your team's not doing very well. Your team's not set up to do well. So a rookie going into a place, you might not be on a team that's supposed to, to win. They didn't set the team up to win, but you need to play your best in that situation no matter what. That was another rookie mistake. You know, the team's not winning. You get down on yourself. You feel like you're not doing good. You get down. No, you need to understand you do your best and that's going to give your agent an opportunity to sell you for the next year. Yeah. All right, cool. Time machine. Let's take it back. You talking to yourself, knowing everything you know now, what advice would you give yourself as a rookie starting off the pro journey? So we're talking from the moment you're like, hmm, pro volley, higher level than college. Who? Um, humility. Humility with the people that I'm playing with, with understanding the coaches, management. I'll, I would just say walk in some serious humility. Um, it's an honor to get to do what you do. And um, I just thought I was hot stuff, to be honest. I was told I was hot stuff, and I believed it. And then I ended up playing with players. I was really – I was blessed. I was playing with some elite players that I didn't – because I had never heard their names – before, I didn't think that they were great players. And now I look back and I'm like, 
Wow. In a way, it was, um, it helped me to have a confidence, so I thought, you know, but later it turned out to be a false confidence, which ripped right from out under me. So, you know, how I'd like to end is just let you talk a little bit about what you do now and why you do it and leave them with Mm. some parting words of wisdom, which you always have. Oh, okay. So, um, talking about what I just said, you know, I, now I understand that a lot of my confidence or what I thought was confidence was very much false confidence. It was fake because I didn't know who I was. I thought that being an athlete was who I was and I didn't understand that that's what I do. That's not who I am. It's an expression of who I am. And because of that, I put undue pressure on myself. I, um, as long as things were going good, I thought I was good. If things were going bad, I thought I was bad. Uh, and so uh, now I have an opportunity to give all of that knowledge to other athletes, to other people in general, people in, in shifts. I stopped my career playing volleyball. I changed. I had a major life that ripped all of that, that identity away. And so um, I had to build it up on the basis of I am and I am enough. So now connect with your gift helps people know who they are is not what they do, that they're a gift. And where can yeah. people find you? How how is it look to get involved if you're, for instance, an athlete? Mm-hmm. I love doing mentoring, so I can do one-on-one mentoring. I do a program called Connect with Your Gift. It's an online program, six weeks, one hour a week. Um, you can contact me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram as Connect with Your Gift. Therese Crawford, actually, Therese Crawford on Instagram, Therese and on Facebook Crawford. as Connect. Am I Therese M. Crawford? Oh, yeah. Therese M. Crawford, let me read it. Social media. Anyway. Therese M. Crawford on Instagram and Connect With Your Gift on Facebook. And you can message me, and I'd love to be a part of your journey. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you. I, I, I do have to say I love what you do. I love who you are. Um, I love what you mm-hmm. mean to me. And I also have so much gratitude for what you've been able to do with the athletes that are not even involved with us, but also those athletes that come into the agency. And it's like, hey, here's, here's this list of mentors. Um, I mm-hmm. suggest you start with these couple and then go from there. And, and I mean, these athletes, every time they really get in with you and they start talking, I just, I see their growth. And I'm, I'm not joking. Mm-hmm. For me, that's, It's just massive. You've been invaluable as a resource um, Mm -hmm. to me and to my athletes and the athletes around the world. So I hope we both keep growing together. I appreciate you. And I can't wait to see you the next time. Those beautiful kids and your husband. Oh, guys. And they have a business called Retreat Tara. Do you want to say something about that? That's incredible. Yeah, really quick, really quick. Um, Retreat Tara is just a place where you can get away, break away and, and really get down to the essence. So that's where you can work with Boris and I individually. Personally, we can get down to the essence of things and you're escaped out of your situation. You know, you get away. We're in a mountain. We're four hours away from the big city. We are eating organic food. We're training and picking up rocks. And Melina was here with us. It was great. So um, it's just a time to really, yeah, Melina Terrell was with us. And, and it's just a great time to just really hone in and get specific about um, your needs and being able to serve you. I would love to do that. And they, they are four hours, just for everybody to understand. They're four hours. So she's gone from Michigan to all around the world to seven <laughs> mountain in Serbia. Okay? Four hours away. From <laughs> so I'm so happy because we get to go there and visit her. When I say we, I'm always talking about myself and the Boston buddy. So love you, darling. I'll talk to you soon. Love Bye. you. Thank you. It's an honor. Bye-bye. Will do. Bye-bye. Bye.